Are you going out of town for an extended period and having somebody come in to check on your snake situation? That's fantastic. Go see the world. You shouldn't feel like a hostage in your own home just because you keep a few snakes. So take off. I mean, not right now. Watch this video first. You may have seen a recent video that I did about how I prep my snakes before I leave town. This will be another video in that series. This might be interesting to you if you haven't left your snakes alone before, and also it might be good for your snake sitter to watch as sort of a training video, but it's not gonna have any rapping or singing like those training videos from the 90s. A customer orders a single with cheese. Here's the way you do it if you wanna please. Lay down the cheese. That Wendy's training song was my jam. My brother Kent, everyone, he worked at Wendy's once for a full six hours. It just wasn't a good fit, according to my shift supervisor. Cooking and pressing our hamburgers isn't easy. It requires a special talent. You know, I always say that Kent is the only employee here at Green Room Pythons, even though he's terrified of snakes. But the truth is that he's the only regular employee. Lucy is a part-time employee because she comes in and takes care of my snakes when I'm out of town. Incidentally, she has won Employee of the Month every single month running, even the months that she doesn't work here. No offense, Kent. None taken. Okay, Lucy has made some appearances on this channel before you may recognize her. Her mom is bringing her over for a ukulele lesson, and I decided to shoot this video really fast while she's here because I'm planning to leave for a couple weeks. Hi, Lucy. Hi, hi, how you doing? Good, good. Uh, you got Tiger Lily there, huh? Yes, I do. Yeah, she likes to come out for enrichment sometimes. Um, all right, tell me this. Uh, when you come in, when I'm gone, and you come in, what, what do I have ready for you? Uh, usually, uh, there are F10 wipes in case there's waste that I need to clean out. There's whiskey in case I happen to get bit, which usually I don't. This isn't for her to drink the whiskey. It's right. to spray in Maya's mouth. Right. We'll talk about that later. Uh, water bowls. Water bowls. Just equipment in general. Right. If you had a friend who was going to snake sit. Okay and they hadn't done it before, what are some things that they should be prepared for? What should they have in their brain before they do this? Well, they should know the snake, definitely, because uh, you gotta know what kind of personality you're dealing with. Is the snake more of a bitey snake? Are they kind of skittish? What, what do they like? So you know how to open the tub and act while you get your stuff done. Or, or the enclosure it could be a big glass enclosure with, a, oh, with yeah. an arboreal snake that loves to strike, right? Yeah. First of all, I wouldn't just bring any friend to do that. Right. Uh, yeah, that's really important because th that's a, that's a yeah. good point to make. Lucy, before I ever had her do this for the first time, like over a year ago, she you were were you twelve or thirteen when when we did this? Thirteen. You're you're fourteen now. Yeah. So before she ever did this, she actually knew all my snakes. She would come over for music lessons, and she, and she liked snakes already. She didn't have to get over a fear of snakes, and she knew all of them. So we mm -hmm. started off from that place. So to your point, ha having that person come and, and meet the snake or snakes. Right. right. You definitely don't want to get somebody like my mom who's like terrified of snakes and have them try and handle them because they'll either get scared and forget something or leave something open or they'll scare the snake and that's not good. Right. So. And your mom absolutely wouldn't do it anyway. She mm -hmm. would say no. But there are people that would say that maybe, maybe they're not scared of snakes when they're thinking about it, but then when they're in front of a snake for the first time, they're like, oh, this is a little bit scary. Yeah. So they need to meet the snakes beforehand. Yes, the snakes should be friends with the human and the human should be friends with the snake. Ah, uh, that's a really good point. You're going to write, grab one of those chalk pens, and we're going we're gonna to write the, the three things that, that we figured out that you're kind of in charge of, right? Mm -hmm. When you get here. One of, by the way, one of them, some of you might be surprised, is not feeding. We're not, I'm not having Lucy feed these snakes, although, uh, although you might feed Maya. In, oh. in, in this run because she knows how to feed the snakes but I don't have her do that because that's more involved and that's okay I can be gone for two weeks and these snakes are fine without food for two weeks so as Tiger Lily crawls on me and behind the board she's going behind the board she doesn't want to be on camera right so what's the first one <clears throat> I think we're gonna go with hydration hydration right that's the big important one my handwriting looks like it's a great. serial killer no it's great all right what's the next sanitation? thing sanitization sanitization yeah you're a snake janitor great <laughs> sanitization so spot cleaning and such right. which we're going to talk about and what was the other thing oh temp temp. temps and humidity just right Temp. just right temps because that's that's the key 
Now, here's the thing. The temps... I don't, I don't normally have Lucy check temps, but we're going to talk about this because you may want somebody to check the temps. I usually just check them before I leave, and then I don't worry too much about them. But you probably should. You know how to do it. So right. I'll probably have you do that this, this time as well. And then humidity also is a thing that you can decide whether you want your snake sitter to deal with humidity or not. Like know how much water to add and such like that. I don't worry about that too much because in a week period of time, I'm usually not gone for two weeks or, or a week and a half. Uh, but in that period of time, I can set my humidity high and then it'll just sort of gradually drop as, as the time goes by. So no big deal. There's one other thing for this board. You've, you've traded snakes now. Who's your favorite snake in the snake room? I don't have a favorite, but I usually grab the Sundance Kid. You definitely have a favorite. It's <laughs> that one right there. Uh, that's okay. Favorites are fine. Um, there's one thing that I, that I uh, forgot to think about on this board, or okay. that I didn't think about on this board. Security. Security. Yeah, like you got to make sure that the cages are all locked and, and tubs are pushed in all the way you and stuff like that. You have a good point. So. This is important with uh, wiggly snakes. Dude, <laughs> you're going to get pink on you. <laughs> Tell me about water changes. That's pretty easy. but Water what, changes. What's important? Okay, it's very basic, easy. Like, you know, you just open it and you either take out the bowl, wash it, and refill the same bowl, or you switch it out with a clean bowl that's ready, uh, filtered or tap water, and you just place it back in there. Right. And super easy. So what do you do in the case of Maya, who is a snake that's likely to think that her hand is food, so you want to do the water change quickly? Uh, well, you have a bowl of water ready by you, already filled up, and you take it out and you quickly switch it in before she can realize that you're not before she can realize you are food. Potentially food. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Right, perfect. So so it's not like the ball pythons where you can open one of their enclosures, mm -hmm. leave it open, wash a bowl out, yeah. and talk on the phone for a while, and then put it back in, and the snake is still there, no problem, curled up in their hide. Right. right? Uh, so so different snakes are different. Mm -hmm. um, all right, so the point is clean, clean fresh water and a clean bowl. Right. So you're not you're not pouring water in a bowl that's full of bacteria and, and slime. And slime. Yeah. Right. Exactly. What was next? Oh, sanitization. What do you do? How do you spot clean? So you locate where it is, and then you take an F10 wipe if you have them. If anything, then like a paper towel or something. What is it that you're looking for? Well, you're looking for urates and poop. So what's, like, what's a urate look like? It's like bird poop. It's like white. And the first time I saw it, I didn't think anything of it. I was like, that's kind of weird looking. Why is that in there? And he's like, oh, no, that's pee. So you grab a wipe, something, you pick up the chunk of substrate you... around it, and you pull it out, and then you throw it away. And then you should get another wipe and clean out that area so it doesn't... And what's... And what's how, how do you know if it's poop? What's poop look like? Dog poop. It looks like a dog went in there and pooped, right? <laughs> yeah. It's just massive. Hi there, kid. How are you? You coming over to check me out? So number three, according to our list, is temps. And, hi buddy. And <laughs> I'm just gonna drop this now because I only have one hand. Uh, so I'm just gonna talk about temps because I don't have you do it, but you know how to use this. You've done right. it before while, while I'm here. So just make sure that your snake sitter knows how to use a temp gun and knows where to take temps. Because, you know, if they, like, if they open a tub and they don't know where that heat strip sits, they're gonna report to you that, that you're thermostat isn't working or that your that your heat isn't working so just make sure that they've done it before and they know exactly where to where to hit that that temp gun all right so next on the list is security what does that mean security means don't let your snake crawl out of their tub slash enclosure because you forgot to close it or lock it yeah and you don't want to you don't want to lose snakes while while the owner is out of town right no that's yeah that's a big problem so, uh, so that's the that's the very last thing that you're going to do before you walk out the door, right? Make is, sure that everything is closed, locked, latched, so right. that they're. I don't, I don't want to say boarded in there, but so that they're boarded in there. <laughs> they so they, they, they need to be boarded in there, yeah, for sure. So the the other thing that's that's important, and and with Lucy, she knows which snakes like like this snake. Chances are, when I'm not here, this snake is going around her neck while she does everything else. Is that true? Is that what happens? It might be true. Okay, so <laughs> it's just my guess. Um, but if if it's a new snake sitter that doesn't know the snakes very well, I would say they shouldn't be playing with the snakes because they might grab a they might grab your corn snake and it 
quickly whips off their arm and takes off and then it's gone. So that's part of security too, that, that they're not taking out the snakes and playing with them because they could easily lose a snake. You guys, let's see what's happening in Kent's corner. Hi, and welcome to Kent's Corner, the best part of any Green Room Pythons video. When I first started working for my brother, he asked me if I would watch his snakes while he was out of town. And I went, wow, what an honor to be asked. Thanks so much, but no thanks. I'd rather not be swallowed whole. Good luck finding anyone brave enough to be alone in that room with all those snakes in there. Thank you for watching Ken's Corner, where workplace safety violations are never encouraged. Thanks for that really important insight, Kent. All right, let's uh, do this Patreon scroll really quick. Here, okay. you, I'm gonna have you hold the Patreon boards. Yeah, you. Yeah, here we're both scrolling up. You're you're one-handed because of the snake, right? Mm -hmm. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is the horde of keepers. <laughs> Hold on, we'll put this. This is the the secret society known as the horde of keepers. Thundercrack. And yeah, right. That was like a thunder flourish, I think, is what you did there. Uh, and it is a secret society. As you may know, this is a complete list of the horde of keepers right here on these boards. They are helping out the channel immensely. This board is almost all the way filled up. Uh, if, if you want to be responsible for me having to go and buy more boards, just go to patreon.com slash green room pythons and don't forget our channel sponsor black <laughs> black box why can't i say black box cages <laughs> black box cages i said it now let me see if i can say it like a normal person and don't forget our channel sponsor black box black box cages black I box cages all right you say it all right <laughs> and don't forget our channel sponsor black box cages oh my gosh you said that so well that was really good really good let's talk about special snake considerations now most of these animals you're not going to have a problem with. I don't have, I don't have Amazon tree boas that are constantly attacking. I don't have anything like that. But I do have one snake. I've got Maya, which Maya. you took the first bite ever from Maya, mm -hmm. and that was cool. It was cool. We got that on camera. <laughs> it does not hurt. Lu Lucy, what's happening here? I just got bit. By what? By a snake. By a black. A black <laughs> That's never happened. But <laughs> well, yeah. Okay. All right. So now we're going to handle this. So with Maya, since we, even though, even though you're okay with getting bit, we don't want you to get bit. Right. So what, what's the special consideration with her? Uh, be uh, aware that she is going to be pretty jumpy. Or... So she, she's in a tub. Yeah. And she may be at the front of the tub. She may not. Yeah. You don't know where she is. I would suggest opening, opening it with a hook. Yeah, open the tub with a hook, because mm -hmm. if, if you reach in, if it's a tub and you reach in and it's a snake that jumps out, then they could grab your arm. Yes, so make sure you know where she is or where her head is, so you know where to not put your hands and arms, and probably take the hook and hook the back of her and move her if you have to, uh, if she's in your way. And if you're trying to close it and she's trying to get out, uh, also take the hook and try and move her, but don't let... She can't be within whipping her head around and biting you distance. So if that makes any sense, that that makes sense. If you could elaborate, but well, yeah. I mean, what what you're saying is is all correct. Like like just knowing how to manage a snake that could potentially think your food. And Maya probably wouldn't at this point, unless unless Lucy came in at night to to change waters. But uh, what what we're actually going to do though is you're going to feed her a reptilink, right? Oh, yeah. like, like if she comes out, you're going to have a reptilink thought out. That's the one snake that you are going to feed when you come in here because okay. then she'll be busy eating and Lucy can do her thing. But aside from that, if you weren't giving her the reptilink, you would just manage her with a hook and you know how to do that. So the snake, your snake sitter might need training on how to do that if your snake needs that. The other thing is the super dwarves. They are, they're hook trained, right? They have a specific hook. So when you go in to change their waters, they oftentimes think they're fed. Yeah. So what are you going to do with that hook? Well, the easier, th uh, it's easier to work with the super dwarves in terms of getting them out of food mode and not wanting to eat you. And specifically because you can tap them with the hook on their head or neck and they'll understand in a few seconds, oh, I'm not being fed. And when you say, when you say tap them on the head, you're not actually tapping them on no, the head. No, don't You're do just that. touching the snake. Please don't yeah, tap just, them on the head. <laughs> just so that people know. Uh, but so, so that's another thing. If you have your snakes hook trained and that's how you deal with your snakes, your snake sitter needs to know how to do that as well. 
Hey you guys, Future Bob here. Delilah and I wanted to jump on really quick just because this video was made a little bit hastily without a ton of planning. And I wanna make the point that it's easy to take for granted some of the very basic things that we do when we take care of our snakes uh, that we had to learn, like where do you aim the temp gun? Somebody that's new to your snake or snakes wouldn't necessarily know stuff like that. So I tried to cover a bunch of those basic things, but also, Everybody keeps their snakes a little bit differently. So there might be steps that you have that I don't have, or maybe some things that I didn't think about that's important. So when you're ready to leave town and you have a new snake sitter, it's just important that you sit down and sort of go over every single step that you do so that you can cover that with them. So they're not alone uh, with the snake by themselves. And all of a sudden something comes up that you forgot to tell them. I think that's all I had to say, except look at Delilah. Look how big she is, you guys. Do you remember that video when I first brought her home and she was like, this big. This video isn't about Delilah, but look at her, you guys. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Thanks for being in this video with me. Yeah, sure. Should we should we redo it and write a rap song? I think we should. Where do I start? What do I do? Just remember the rap, Billy, and you'll be cool.